<laughs> You've never heard of any of these books even, I bet. I'm, I'm lighting this with my TV. There's not been any sunlight in quite a few days. I really need one of those Charlie D'Amelio ring lights. Someone wanna, what am I? Y'all need to um, hit up my Amazon wish list. I'm just kidding, I don't have one of those. That seems desperate. Sorry. Sorry to anyone with an Amazon wish list, but like, really? Damn. I also am wet and covered in mud. I just went for a run in the forest and it's raining. So recently I bought a whole bunch of books. A few weeks ago, I was just kind of in the mood to um, buy some books. I was kind of like, do you know what? I'm bored as fuck. I want to fulfill my dreams and lift them out loud. So I went through my Goodreads what, like, wish list, want to read or whatever. And I scoured the internet to find the cheapest book deals. I bought most of these from Book Depository, which is my first time. Good experience, really great experience. The books were cheap. Uh, shipping was free for like everywhere in the world. Let me know if that's a good place to buy books. I feel like there might be some like, they've got to have some like ethical issues there or something. So let me know if I should never buy books from them again. I also have some from uh, some different places. I got two of these books from this bookstore in like Ohio because Sierra <laughs> it's like, I think it was like Christmas Eve, put on Instagram story that they were doing like a deal, two books for $20. And I was like, wait, let me, <laughs> let me, let me, let me, part like, okay, uh, I'm, uh, it's a pretty good deal. I bought it and then it ended up being like $20 for shipping to Canada. What? Then I was like, okay, like, it's fine because I'm like supporting this like book, bookstore in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Um, then, upon checkout, it, it was, in fact, $42 USD, which is about, um, two, 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 $2,600 some dollars Canadian. I, like, tried to cancel the order, but then I also was kind of like, it's not that big of a deal. My want to reads on Goodreads is full of, like... I don't know. It's a lot of books that I see and I'm like, oh, I would love to read that one day because, like, it would make me feel really cool. You definitely have not seen any of these books on the fucking the book talk or whatever you call it. So yeah, the first one I have here is The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. This is a collection of poetries. I think it might be, is it? No, this represents the acme of Khalil Gibran's achievement. Okay, good for him. I think this might be like a little bit philosophical. I have no fucking clue where I got this from. It just was in my want to read on Goodreads and I was like, damn, like, <laughs> I guess it's, I guess I'll get it. Although it says that he adopted the tone and cadence of King James the first Bible. Fusing his personalized Christian philosophy with a spirit and oriental wisdom that derives from the richly mixed influences of his native Lebanon. Oh, it was written a very long time ago. It says that it was written back here in 1805, but I don't believe that. I don't think anyone was writing anything in 1805. That's like too long ago. It's kind of reminding me of The Alchemist. The Alchemist is just shallow bullshit. No offense. I don't know. I'll let you know what I think of it. This is second place by Rachel Cusk. So this is about a woman who invites a famed artist to the remote coastal landscape where she lives. Oh! Oh, I just finished yesterday Kafka on the Shore by Murakami and I was gonna say like that sounds just like it It kind of does. I mean inviting well, she didn't invite. I don't know. There's like a painting and the Kafka on the I'm making connections That like y'all are not probably not following like the connections that I make the thoughts that I have It's honestly when people watch my videos and they don't end up subscribing and they leave some like crazy hate comment It's literally just because y'all are not able to keep up with my brain and my mind because it's working way faster and on like a whole other level. So if you're subscribed to this channel and you're able to handle these videos that I make and listen to my genius without completely combusting, <sighs> give yourself a pat on the back. However, this woman is drawn to his paintings. She believes his vision may penetrate the mystery at the center of her life. But as a long dry summer sets in, his provocative presence soon twists the pattern of her secluded household. So it's about a woman who invites an artist and this artist, man, he's I think a little bit of a freak and um, brings a vibe into the home that she was not expecting. I love this cover too, very simple, very clean. This needs a few more layers of paint though. 
You see that? Yeah, you could use a few more layers of pink there. The next one I'm so excited for. Last year I read Lolita by a Bobby Nabokov. Um, that's a little bit of an inside joke I got going with a few of my subscribers. Um, honestly, it's not. By Vladimir Nabokov, he wrote Lolita. I read Lolita last year for a video and I ended up really loving mainly his writing. I loved Vladimir Nabokov's writing. So I have Penin by Vladimir Nabokov. And then I also bought Pale Fire, although it hasn't arrived yet. However, Penin is about a professor called Timothy? Timothy Pinin, previously of Tsarist Russia. Ooh. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of like Des- <laughs> I'm a big fan of Rasputin, not Despacito. I fully was about to call him Despacito. I love Rasputin. I think that he's like a boss bitch. Like damn, she and her move. Like damn, she and her move. Like damn. However, he is now precariously perched at the heart of an American campus, battling with American life and language. Pinin must face great hazards in his new world: the ruination of his beautiful lumber room as office, the removal of his teeth, and the fitting of new ones. Ooh, <laughs> he's getting veneers. The search for a suitable boarding house and the trials of taking the wrong train to deliver a lecture in a language she has yet to master. Supposedly, this is really funny. Oh, for the same video that I read the Lolita, <laughs> the Lolita. <laughs> I also read The Stranger by Albert Camus. Not only was it just his writing that I was obsessed with, I also loved The Stranger just as like a book. And I don't know what happened, but I really, really wanted was The Plague by him. And then probably my second choice was The Fall. And I swear to God, I put them in my cart. But now that I think about it, I think at, at checkout, I was like, <laughs> I don't got money like that right now. So I did take out a few books and I must have taken out The Fall and The Plague, which left me with the myth of Sisyphus. <laughs> oh my gosh, what is this about? It says on here, there is but one truly serious philosophical problem and that is suicide. <laughs> Damn. I love the cover of this though. I love a black and white and the blue too really fits it nice. This is inspired by the myth of the man condemned to ceaselessly push a rock up a mountain and watch it roll back to the valley below. Okay, I'm, f I'm familiar with Sisyphus, Syphilis, is that really what he was called? This book supposedly transformed 20th century philosophy with its impassioned argument for the value of life in a world without religious meaning. Oh, I like the sound of that actually. The next one I have is An Apprenticeship or the Book of Pleasures by Clarice Lecepter. First of all, the cover. Hello? Look at that. Hopefully my TV is lighting this up well because that is like a sick ass cover. This is about Lori who yearns for love yet is scared of herself and of connecting with another human. Okay, this feels like a personal attack. But then she meets Ulysses, which is a stupid name. Doesn't say that, that was my own. That was my own ad lib. He is a professor of philosophy mm -hmm. and she is forced to confront her fears. Oh. And then they just, I guess, fall in love, but she's a bit like, nah, like. <laughs> So it's like a little love story. This one was recommended by Sally. I think it's like her favorite book. They can't kill us until they kill us. Another one with like a lit ass. Like, look at that cover. Look at that cover. If you hate this cover, I hate you. So good. You know, it's hard to do red, white, and blue, but this is a collection of essays from Hanif Abdurraqib. Damn, there's no, oh. Red. Okay, no, there's no synopsis. This was one of the books that I got from that bookstore in Columbus, Ohio. I think that the essays in this um, just span like everything. Like I think there's some funny stuff. I think there's some sad stuff. I think it's a lot about like American culture. I'm really not sure at all. Although I'm very excited to read it. And then I have another recommendation from Ms. Sally. I have a collection of poems called The Carrying by Ada Limone. Um, I believe that Ada Limone is what is it called? I'm not American. The Laureate Poet... Does a Canada have that? That's gonna be me. I... My goal is probably to be the Canadian... Canadian... <laughs> the Poem Laureate of Canada in about like four years. It's important to have goals and to make goals. I've never written a poem before, but like I feel like I'd just be really good at it. However, this cover is one like... Like... 
I don't know. Uh, wait, not the red, white, and blue. You know, it's hard to do red, white, and blue. However, this is uh, instructions on not giving up. Aw, I think it's gonna be a poetry collection about hope. This one is a memoir, a history of my brief body. Immediately what I was drawn to was this incredible cover. Um, what the fuck? I believe that Billy Ray Belcourt, the person who wrote it, is queer and indigenous. They're also Canadian. And I think it just kind of is about their life. And it's just a whole bunch of little essays. Oh, this one's lit. This is The Hole by Hiroka Oyamada. These covers just keep getting better and better. It looks like there's a, like a, a tissue, like a garbage in the grass. A while ago, I read The Factory by Hiroka Oyamada and I loved it. It was about the same length as this. However, this is about Asa, Asa, Asa. I'm gonna say Asia. I'm gonna say Asia. Can I say Asa? Asia? Asa? Look at this spelling. Tell me what it says. Her husband is being transferred, and the young couple moves next door to his family's home in the Japanese countryside. She tries to readjust to their remote rural lives until one day she comes across a strange creature, follows it to the embankment of a river, and ends up falling into a hole. A hole. <laughs> Not funny. Um, a hole that. <laughs> <laughs> a hole that seems to have been made specifically for her. It's very surreal, or at least the factory was, and this sounds just as like surreal and like mind fucky. I hope it's just as good as the factory, if not better. And then I also have Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. Last year I read The Pisces. I thought it was great. I just like Vladimir Nabokov, I loved the writing. Her writing is so good. She's so funny. However, The Pisces, I just had a problem with the narrative at the end. And I wasn't a huge fan of the way it ended. Although this one is about Rachel, who is 24 years old. She's a lapsed Jew who has made calorie restriction her religion. Working as an underling at a Los Angeles talent management agency, she maintains an illusion of existential control by way of obsessive food rituals. She then meets Miriam, a Zaftig young Orthodox Jewish woman who works at her favorite frozen yogurt shop. Rachel then embarks on a journey marked by mirrors, mysticism, mother's milk, and honey. I feel like people either hate it or love it, but the people that hate it, like, like, hate it. But hopefully I'm not one of those people. I love the cover, too. Is that supposed to be, like, a, a nipple? Big pink nipple. And then the last one that I got is a uh, nonfiction. It's Why Fish Don't Exist by Lulu Miller. I like this cover too. Oh, and it, 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 the fish, the fish, the fish continues onto the back. Oh. The blue and the gold, I think that's a, like, y'all don't get it. Like, y'all don't get it the way that I get it. But like, that combination of like this navy slate blue with the gold, y'all would never understand. However, this is about a taxonomist named David Starr Jordan. His fish collections were demolished by lightning, by fire, and eventually by the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which sent more than a thousand specimens plummeting to the floor. I hope you can't see my knee. In an instant, his life work was shattered. But instead of giving in to despair, Jordan introduced one clever innovation that he believed would at last protect his work against the chaos of the world. Oh! Oh! Wow! I just opened it up to a random page and there's illustrations and that's really cool. Like, that's really cool. <laughs> oh my god. That is so cool. I think each chapter has one of those. <gasps> what? I'm thinking about just like ripping these out and putting them on my damn fucking wall. Look at that. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Who did these? <gasps> okay, Darwinism. Like what? Like damn. Thanks for watching. If you've read any of these books, which like let's be real, <laughs> you probably haven't. You've definitely never read any of these books because they're just like different. Like they're. <laughs> if you've read any of these books, let me know. But like, you haven't. Like let's be like let's be real. And tell me what you thought of them if you read them, which like, we know you didn't because like, you'd never even heard of these books. My back hurts and my foot hurts. My body's falling apart. Bye. Bye. See ya. I can't get up. I think I'm gonna spend the rest of my life on the floor because
I can't get up because my back is seizing up now. Okay. See ya. Also, those camels, the humps, they jiggle. They are fucking jiggling.